In this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to drill a hole in the front of a turned component. I'm also going to go into different drilling cycles and different G-codes that we can use to do this. We always start each block of program off the same. In this case, we are using N4 for our search number so we can locate this part of the program when we need to. And then an operator's note. In this case, we're using a five millimeter drill. Now we add G54, which is our datum call command. In the machine, we have already preset the datum to be the front face of the job. So Z0 is the front face of the job. On this block, we give the machine a few different commands. We start with GOO. This tells the machine to go into the rapid mode. This is for future movements that we're going to use after this block. The G97 tells the machine that we are in normal revs per minute mode regarding the spindle speed. The alternative to this is G96, which is constant service cutting speed. This is explained in a different part of the course. In this case, G97 tells the machine we're using a 1000 RPM spindle speed, and it maintains that as accurately as it can throughout the drilling process. This T value defines the tool number and the offset number. In this case, we are defining tool 4 and offset 4. Our drill is located in position 4 on the machine turret and we're calling upon offset 4. By glancing inside our machine we can see our drill is in position 4 on the turret. This is why we use N4 as our search value. It makes it easy to remember where our tool is and where to search in the program to find it. And finally on this block we tell the machine to turn the spindle on in a clockwise motion by using MO3. X0 takes our tool down to the centre line of the component. As is standard on all lathes, the centre line is normally known as X0. The Z position, Z5, brings us 5mm off the datum position. We set the datum position in the machine using G54, so the machine knows the end of the component is at 0. So this brings us 5mm off the face of the job. The machine will move to these coordinates using the rapid travel command. This was already defined in the line above using the GOO command. Finally, the MO8. This turns the coolant on. It's always a good idea to have coolant on when drilling a hole or any turning operation. Still under the rapid travel command, I now rapid in the tool one millimeter off the face of the job. I tend to do it on a separate line to bring it in this close to the component just in case I've misread the tool measurements and the tool is not set up right. When first running the machine, we'll be running it on single block. This gives us ample time to see that the tool is in the right position, so it stops any chance of collision. It's more of a safety thing that I personally do. Now it's time to start cutting metal. Using a GO1 command, this is our feed rate command. We bring the tool in Z minus 50 millimeters to the depth of the hole. We declare the feed rate using an F value, in this case it's 0.08 millimetres per revolution of the spindle. To bring the drill out of the job, we bring it out using the rapid travel command GOO, and we bring it out with 5mm clearance from the face of the job. This makes sure any swarf can be relieved from the bore before we move away the tool back to its tool change position. G53 changes our working datum to the machine datum. This means the machine has a separate Z0, X0 position that we tend to use for tool change. But in this case, I have moved the Z position 210 millimeters into the center of the machine. This keeps the tools away from the sub spindle when we're doing tool changing. It's purely a safety thing and it's different for every machine. I just like to keep the turret away from any spindles while doing a tool change. As with all operations within the program, I like to end each operation with an MO1 command. This way we can choose to stop the machine using an optional stop if need be. It makes it easy to jump in and out of different parts of the program and also so we can check the quality of the tools and the quality of the components after we finish cutting it if we feel the need. Now drilling a hole 50mm deep with a 5mm drill is probably not a good idea. 
One, the swarf will start obstructing the coolant, so coolant is not getting to the tipple at all, increases the chance the tool will burn out and snap. And also the swarf is getting built up and bound inside that hole, so we're not relieving it. And after drilling 50 millimeters, it's gonna snag and again cause the tool to break. So what can we do to relieve that? Well, the answer is using a peck drilling operation. This is where we peck at the hole rather than just drilling in one go. This helps relieve the swarf and also helps coolant get to the tip of the drill and keeps everything cool and cutting nice. But how do we know when we need to use peck drilling and not normal drilling? Drilling 50 millimeters with a five millimeter drill is classed as a deep hole. A deep hole is defined by any hole that is greater than five times the diameter of the drill. So for example, in this case, we are using a five millimeter drill. Five times five millimeters is 25 millimeters. So any hole over 25 millimeters would be classed as a deep hole. For any deep hole, I would definitely use a peck drilling cycle, even on materials such as nylon. But this is just a rule of thumb. It depends on the material you're cutting. For example, if you're cutting titanium, it might be best to peck even a 10 millimeter hole or maybe even a five. It really depends on what you're cutting and the speed you're cutting at. So let's look at how we do peck drilling. There are many different kinds of pecking cycles. In this case, I'm going to demonstrate the two most used ones in turning. To start with, let's discuss the G83. The G83 is used for deep hole drilling. It returns the peck outside the bore each time it pecks. In other words, it retracts right outside the job before it goes back in and starts cutting again. This is great for clearing swarf and getting coolant to the tip of the tool. After the G83 command, it's usual to give the full Z depth of the depth of the hole. In this case, it's 50 millimeters for a 50 millimeter deep hole. The R value is our retract value. In this case, we're using five millimeters. This brings the drill five millimeters outside the job on each peck. It's usually beneficial to add a dwell at the bottom of the hole. When the drill is at full depth, we normally like to dwell for a few milliseconds. This cleans up the hole and makes it more accurate and more consistent with our accuracy. To do that, we use a p-value. In this case, I've decided to use 500. That's in milliseconds. So at the bottom of the hole, the drill would dwell for half a second before it retracts. The q-value tells the drill how deep to make each peck. Since we're using the metric system, this is given in microns, so in this case, every two millimeters, the drill will fully retract. At the end of this block, we issue a feed rate using an F command. In this case, we're using the same feed rate as before, with 0.08 millimeters per revolution. After the peck drilling cycle is complete, the machine will retract to the glass given Z movement. In this case, it was one millimeter off the face of the job. We cancel the drilling cycle by using G80, the code that cancels all cycles. Now, as our drill is only one millimeter off the face of the job, I like to rapid it away to at least five millimeters clearance. This ensures it can safely wrap it to the machine home position without getting caught up in swarf. When drilling shorter holes in harder material, we might not necessarily need to retract the drill from the job each time we peck. So it's just to do a small peck with inside the material, this is called a chip peck drilling cycle. We define this by using G73. We don't need an R value because that tells us how far to retract outside of the job, but everything else means exactly the same. The P value is the time of dwell at the bottom of the bore, and the Q value is the depth of cut between each peck. I tend to use this pecking cycle when I'm drilling a center drill in titanium. It stops the drill from burning out increasing your tool life. In this section, we discussed how to drill a hole on the Z axis of a lathe, using not only standard drilling procedures, but also two different kinds of peck drilling operations.